Hello. Uh, today we are going to uh, start with uh, the new slide set. Uh, it is about object relations. So far we talk about a single object, single class, and how uh, especially constructors, uh, destructors behave in that object in order to provide integrity and integrity of pass by value return as a value and assignment semantics. How we can uh, keep integrity of uh, an object through this uh, constructor destructors. Uh, so today in the slides we uh, talk about the we will talk about the multi object case when we have more than one object and how they interact and uh, we have three basic relations, we will talk about them and their constructors and integrity. And then we will talk about uh, the uh, problem, it's the most important part, which is the uh, inheritance relation. Uh, so uh, the figures in the uh, right-hand side are uh, the UML uh, notation uh, class diagrams. Uh, basically, we have uh, three uh, diagrams here at the top, aggregation uh, in the middle, composition, and at the bottom, there is uh, generalization. So, uh, when you do some object oriented design, you usually determine the classes that are dependent on each other indirectly, directly, uh, or as some uh, loose, loosely coupled way. Uh, the uh, providing this will give you better understanding of the uh, object oriented design and this is used by especially software engineers uh, and programmers of course uh, to uh, draw the picture of uh, your program your modulization your encapsulation abstraction in a more formal way uh, in software engineering courses and probably a couple of technical courses, you will have a better uh, explanation of this. But uh, basically, uh, in a class diagram, we have a class name, followed by the attributes, the member variables, followed by uh, the member functions. Uh, this plus uh, in the beginning, uh, denotes that it is a public member that means it is a part of the interface so you can consider this as the details hidden details and the interface of the class uh, so after uh, this definition uh, you can define uh, the uh, relation among the classes through uh, this arrows with uh, special uh, heads or the beginnings. Um, so this is a uh, diamond shape, which is empty. It's called an aggregation relation. If that diamond shape is full diamond, it is a uh, composition. Uh, and if uh, the direction is some sort of reverse, or uh, you can call it uh, inheritance, uh, empty arrowhead, uh, triangle arrowhead and the uh, this means student is inherited from person or student extends person and so on uh, the first two uh, relations are called has a relation uh, and the third one is called uh, inheritance or is a relation like person uh, not person student is a person instructor is a person kind of relation and the uh, uh, depending on how uh, this has a relation uh, coupled, how loosely uh, or tightly coupled, we call that an aggregation or composition. Uh, these relations are important because when you change some part of code, especially the interface of your class, that means the other classes will be affected. So you should uh, consider your encapsulation as a whole. Uh, of all related classes, all related objects in a single encapsulation. Uh, changing type of course, adding a new class on course, or changing 
interface, of course, will affect student and vice versa. Uh, so uh, now let us look into details of those. Uh, uh, in this example, we have course uh, student relation. Uh, we can have uh, zero or more instance of class B in class A. However, uh, the lifetimes are distinct. That means uh, the A object and B object can be alive independently. And then they are somehow uh, combined so that uh, their references are uh, maintained by the others and so on. This is some sort of catalog relationship and we have references or pointers of uh, values referring to each other. For example, you are uh, familiar with student information system, so we can have an example on that. So as the student, uh, a class can, an object can be registered to multiple courses. And a course may have multiple students enrolled. Also, a student may have a transcript containing many other courses that student uh, had taken, passed, or failed. Uh, and courses have other relations like the student list, depending on different semesters and so on. The idea here is when a student drops a course, it will be deleted from the enrolled list of the course, but course will still alive, and vice versa. Uh, when you delete it, course, for example, it, is, it will not be offered in the semester, you delete it, the students will not be, uh, the students are indirectly affected, but they, their lifetime will be still uh, alive, so they will be alive. So this uh, relation also uh, quite uh, weakly coupled, so we don't have any scope relation, uh, we don't have any part of um, uh, accessing private, any means of accessing uh, private members of each other. So they behave like unrelated objects to each other. You can write, for example, a register function to course, given a student reference, it will be inserted into this list of existing students here. Okay. So the list of students is updated so that uh, it will be in the list. Uh, having this relation means in your encapsulation you can uh, provide integrity. For example, you can enforce prerequisite relation, uh, course capacity relation, or um, previously taken or failed relation. In this way, you can provide integrity. But you should know that these are two different objects and they don't have any uh, relation at all in terms of uh, scope access and so on. Uh, but we mark them as dependent because they are using each other's interface, one, the other, or the other way around. So in this way, uh, for example, C is going to use, or the student is going to use C that register and so on. Uh, as long as you keep interfaces, nothing is much important, but if interface change, you should uh, update the other class. The second relation is the composition. Uh, actually, this first uh, slide had an example of that, the male uh, example. A male is, uh, a male consists of uh, a male header and a male body. And you cannot have a male without a header, or you cannot have a male body without uh, a male, and so on. So uh, it is not natural to uh, have a male without male header and male body. And when a lifetime of male is over, its header and body is over. Or uh, when lifetime of male body is over, actually male is not. Uh, uh, containing a value anymore. So this is a uh, container relationship, and we call that a composition. Uh, 
So it is like a compose part relation, the, uh, the composite and the uh, parts uh, relation. So we can have zero or more instances of B like uh, in the aggregate. However, lifetimes are depending on each other and you should uh, destroy class B objects when A is destroyed. Uh, again, as in the aggregate, uh, they don't have this uh, lexical scope relation. They are uh, unframed uh, classes uh, by default. So they refer to each other as uh, regular uh, variable object members, only public members are accessible. If you like so, you can add friendship into this picture. Uh, and uh, the typical uh, example is the container relationship here. So for example, a frame box has a frame and a text. That means frame box contains a frame and a text. A uh, frame, uh, a shape is either circle or rectangle, so it is included by the frame box. And within the uh, frame, we have the text, so that uh, we have a relation of containment, and that means the size of a frame box is size of shape plus size of string plus size of double, size of double. It is like a C structure, an nested C structure. But in object-oriented terms, it is a composite relation. Uh, especially uh, the integrity of this contained object is concern of us in this chapter or in this slide. But we will talk uh, about them. So the uh, size relation is like this. Frame has some size. String has some size. So size of int plus coordinates and so on, text. And then we will have the other one. So size will be some of the others. Uh, in the uh, member methods of the frame box, the frame and text are like regular object variables. So you have to uh, follow this uh, private public discipline. So, and you are only uh, allowed to access the public interface. And how integrity is preserved? Sorry. Ah, sorry about that. Um, Sorry about the interruption. Uh, okay, so uh, the uh, uh, the next thing is the integrity of this contained object, and for that uh, we have to uh, so what we can do. Let us. Have a look. So I have the same example here, fully implemented. Uh, okay. Uh, so here we have uh, the text just consists of a pointer here, uh, and it has the constructor, usual constructors, reporting like this, and empty constructor reporting an empty or just no string. Uh, the this is the copy constructor. It reports as copy. It uses strdub of uh, C library. And this is the destructor. It is deleting the allocated string. Uh, and 
we have the definition of a frame, which consists of uh, line style of the frame, uh, the offset, width, and height, uh, and uh, line width of the frame. It's a rectangular, not uh, circle in this case. So uh, frame A, B, C, D, and frame A, B, C, line style, and the line width. Uh, there are different constructors for them. This is the empty parameter constructor, and this is the destructor. Uh, all of them, uh, all of them are reporting uh, the content. This is the copy constructor of frame, and this is for out implementation. And this is just a simple draw. If if we had graphics, you could have actually drawing the frame. Uh, now, uh, based on that, I can define text box and the frame. And this is text box, and this is frame. For the time being, let us comment out this part, which is about integrity, and see what will happen. Uh, so when you creating, when you are creating a text box with parameters, you should be uh, setting the uh, inner text here and inner frames. Uh, unfortunately, text uh, x is a, text y is b, text w is c, and uh, frame digits. Uh, is not going to work because for uh, text box uh, scope the text and frame are objects and we can only access public members of them and we cannot have that facility uh, either solution, uh, one solution is putting, for example, here. Making text box a friend so that we can do this, which is an ugly way of doing that. Uh, however, sometimes you, need to, uh, you may need to that, do that. Or we can do this. So this syntax. After this parenthesis is closed, uh, parameters are over. After column, you are allowed to call constructors in C++. And I am calling constructor of frame and constructor of S with the parameters. Uh, let us forget this for this way of initialization and see what will happen. And uh, draw of text box calls draw of text plus Draw off uh, the frame variable. Uh, so I have A, B, C, R uh, variables of main. I draw A, I draw B, I draw C, and I draw twice B. We are going to talk about that in a moment. So now let us call compilers. And and this is our oops. Uh, so here, if you look at uh, the uh, empty uh, constructors, this one is a uh, uh, inside of uh, this uh, a I have three constructors three constructor calls one is the constructor of the string the other is the frame I believe and the third one is the text box and you will see this pattern in B case as well. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
to three constructors. And for the C, we have one, two, three constructors again. However, we have a, a problem here, especially in uh, ABC, this one. As you can see, we forgot intentionally uh, passing arguments to the contained object. So that is 5, 5, 10, 20, and uh, frame dotted and 0 0.5 really uh, were not passed to the inner object. So let us correct that. So in the uh, text box uh, constructor here, after the parentheses, I call A, B, D, C, D, E, F parameters to the frame and text to the inner string and make it. And then I compile them. Uh, so now, as you can see, we have a really has to inner text, 5, 5, 10, 20, dotted and line with 0 0.5 as passed to the frame. And the text box construct is called and the, uh, the last. And in the uh, draw of the C, which is this one, basically, simply this one is drawn correctly. Uh, now, I would like you to focus on uh, something else, which is the uh, order of constructor calls. Order of uh, constructor calls are uh, contained objects one by one, then the composite object. And we have, of course, uh, a reason for that. Uh, the reason is basically uh, in the body of the uh, body of the constructors, like this one, and this body, so between this shoulder braces, I would like to have a valid frame and a valid text. So that means before the curly braces uh, are executed, I should have an integrity guarantee uh, frame and text object available. That's why the frame constructor and text constructors are uh, preceding the, uh, the body of uh, text box construction. So an order is something like that. The, the allocation of the text box object is done. The bytes are available. Then the uh, contained objects and the container object constructors are executed. Uh, now let us look into the destruction order. In the destruction order, we have a similar uh, problem. We have this destructor of text box may refer to the uh, objects frame and text. That, that means when this curly braces, the body of tilde text box is working, we should have a valid frame and a valid text. That's why you will see a, a text box destruct followed by its frame and the string. So the construction order, string, uh, frame text box, destruction order, text box, frame string. So the reverse order. So this is the uh, integrity of the objects uh, and how we can achieve that. So now, returning back, to the presentation, how this is possible. So 
I cannot press the next slide. Let me share again. Okay, uh, Zoom has some problems with my notations. Uh, So this is uh, about the uh, aggregate. In aggregate, we don't have any constructor, destructor. So we don't uh, care for that. Um, uh, oh, sorry, this is not aggregate. This is about uh, the student array consisting of student pointers. So if you uh, decide to maintain it like that, uh, you are responsible for allocation and the allocation of the uh, object so uh, the destructors the allocation and uh, allocation is explicit in this example so we have array of students class containing the objects but you uh, are in charge of location the allocation and uh, heap variable constructs and our destructors are called as usual but uh, in the implicit version, as we have in the example, uh, so we have this place is the place for uh, calling constructors of, or passing parameters to constructors of uh, contained objects. Uh, Uh, so uh, this is how we pass arguments. Um, also in newer uh, C++ standards, uh, uh, the initialization is also possible in the construction. So uh, we can write, uh, for example, uh, frame frm equals blah blah when we are uh, giving the member variable. Uh, so we can use that as well. Uh, so, uh, so these are called uh, initializer lists and they are, uh, in this case, they are member initializer lists. Uh, and uh, one important important thing uh, you may need to know is uh, they are called in declaration order no matter if you change their order or not okay so i can uh, show you in my example that changing the order will not change their construction order so let us go here and instead of actually it is already uh, that way so frame text instead of this you could have written first text then frame it is having text frame and switching that order is not going to change the behavior of your program first string then frame string frame string frame Okay. Uh, so call order will always be A, B, C, regardless of your uh, positions, uh, regardless of their positions in the uh, memory initializer list. Okay, uh, the more interesting and uh, in object-oriented programming, more important type of object relation is called uh, generalization or inher inheritance. We have different terminology for that. Uh, it is, uh, is a relation. So for example, you can say circle is a shape, rectangle is a shape. So it ha that means circle has everything related to a shape, uh, everything that uh, shape defines. In addition, it has some extra features. 
extra member values or extra behavior. If you want. Uh, so we have different terminology. You, you can call it circle expand shapes or shape as super class of uh, circle or circle is top class of uh, shape uh, and uh, for uh, if information wise uh, the uh, we say that shape is a general class and circle is a specific class uh, shape has less information circle has more information uh, in this way we can define that uh, in uh, c++ we use this syntax here, after the class name, we have a, a protection label followed by the class name. I will say that circle has anything inside of a shape plus something extra. And the extra things are here, which is the radius. Okay. Uh, a square is a shape, it contains everything. Uh, a shape has, in addition, it has a width. Uh, so that means square has an internal X and Y, like a shape, or circle has an internal X and Y. So in this uh, way, we can add more and more information uh, to other to our uh, classes if they have this type relation. And the uh, in memory, they look like this. A uh, circle has some inner shape, and that shape has uh, two double variables. So the size of a circle will be size of a shape plus radius, which is a specific variable. And the uh, same thing, uh, environment-wise, we have uh, environment of circle is equal to environment of the shape union member specific the circle. Uh, and uh, if you reuse the same name twice, so in shape we have, for example, show function. If you have circle show as well, uh, the circle show will overwrite the other one, but uh, it will not hide it. If you use it directly, it will be circle show. However, there is a way of calling uh, shape show as well. We are going to talk about that. The next problem comes about uh, the access of the variables, access control of the variables. And are you going to be uh, able to access the shape private members or no? Uh, the answer is no. So it, you cannot access private members. But we, if you remember, we have uh, a different label we didn't use so far, which is called protected. The protected label is for that purpose. If you like uh, to protect a variable for object users, but not inheritance users, you mark it as protected. So protected will let, uh, protected will behave like private if it is an uh, object instance, uh, out, outer scope, but if it is a uh, subclass, uh, it will be the uh, public, it will behave like public, so it will be accessible. The second thing is the derivation label, which is used after the comma. Those two will change uh, the accessibility of the members. Uh, protected means subclasses can access. The derivation label is like a filter, the filter for outer words. So you derive a new class from A. So you have A here. And from that, you derive a new class. So B inherits from A. Assume we have a boundary here so that other users of B as an object like B dot blah blah or as derivation so further 
a class further deriving it. Okay. And this boundary, this derivation label will behave like a filter. And it will make the minimum of what we have. In A, it is private. Filtering it will be private. It is protected. Private filter, make it private. Protected filter, keep it protected. Public filter will keep it protected. If it is public, so users of B and C, uh, public, uh, A is public, whatever filter is going to be the uh, pro actual protection label here. So I have a table for you for all uh, possibilities. Uh, how you should read that uh, table. Uh, the right hand side is for derivation label, left hand side for just simple accessibility. We have uh, one, two, three positions of access. Uh, one is the member function of A, the second is member function of B, third is uh, object access uh, of uh, B, uh, sorry, uh, A, okay? Uh, for B, it will be the derivation label case, so derivation label uh, matters. For one, two, three, derivation label is not important. So derivation label does not change here. This is one of the common confusions. You may assume that the excess of two is dependent on this derivation label. It is not. They are not related. Derivation label is about the B object or further derivation like this. Okay. So one, two, three is actually easy uh, to fill in. So uh, the uh, at B, which is the class members. So the class uh, member of A can access class members of A without any problem. Uh, for two, we have uh, public members are accessible for all cases. Uh, and the private member A is not accessible in any position. And uh, the protected member B is not accessible in the object context. And this is what protected means, okay? Uh, as an object, here in this position uh, three, you cannot access it, but in the member function of B, you can access it. Okay, now let us look at the uh, derivation label case. If derivation label is uh, public, the C will, the C access, uh, Okay, the, let us use this uh, four first. And the four case, which is the object of B, object of B, uh, in a public case, it is going to behave like public. So the public member is going to be accessed in any way. And the others will not be accessed. So this is uh, derivation label B, uh, insignificant because it is public it doesn't filter anything it is going to be uh, same as usual uh, so uh, also here the a will not be accessible but b will is a b is a uh, c is a subclass so b is protected this will be accessible c is public so it will be accessible now uh, Applying uh, this protect, uh, protection label. So since A is private, we can mark it all private because private and any protection label will make it a pro uh, private. So these guys cannot access them. Uh, the uh, private label is going to filter and convert everything into private. And four and five are not members 
functions of uh, A, so they cannot access them. Protected member is going to behave like a protected filter and convert everything protected. Four is the object context. So these are not allowed. Uh, however, the uh, five, which is the subclass members, protected members are accessible. Protected, protected is protected. Protected public is protected. So they are going to be accessed. Okay. So private, 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 everything is private in this case. In this case, uh, private, protected, protected, private, protected, protected. In this filter, it is uh, private, protected, public, private, protected, public. Okay. So uh, this way we can fill uh, this access matrix and I will leave it as clear uh, if you revisit this. You can test on your own by write, writing examples. But this is the idea, derivation label is the filter for uh, the objects and further derivation. And we always take the minimum. So this is just the uh, same thing in the next uh, slide. Uh, so uh, again, we have uh, the inheritance uh, uh, Defining uh, the relation, the inner class of integrity is another issue. And similar to initialize the list of contained objects, the inherited uh, object has the uh, same uh, way initialized here. However, only difference is instead of a member name, we have a class name here. So inner subclass, inner superclass is assigned this way. Okay. Uh, and uh, also we have a rule uh, regardless of initializer list, uh, the order of execution was the same. We have base classes in order of appearance in the declaration and member objects in order of appearance. And we don't have, again, uh, the initializer list uh, any significance. Okay, now let us have an example on inheritance as well. Again, I am going to use this shape example. So we have a shape with constructors and destructors. We have a text which is derived from shape publicly. Derivation label is public. And we have text initialized out of shape this way. The offset of the shape is passed as an argument A and B. So it is doing something, initialization and so on. And this is the empty parameter constructors and actually in the previous example I missed one spot. And that spot is the text box didn't have any copy constructors. It doesn't have any copy constructor, but we have this output. The uh, draw device here. Sorry, I forgot to show that. The draw device had a text copy and the frame copy. Even though text box didn't have any uh, constructors uh, itself alone. Uh, the inner con objects constructors are called by uh, C++. Okay, so this is the pass by value case. Uh, 
means uh, copy constructors, and inner objects are uh, called uh, in a discipline similar to an arbitrary object. If you like so, you can write your own constructors. This way, okay, and let's mark it like that. Let's make it and execute it. So, what happens since uh, I didn't? Uh, call uh, the copy constructors explicitly. It is there in from empty parameters instead of the existing parameters. So you have to do this. You have to put an initializer list here. Frame is constructed from text boxes frame and text is constructed from text box uh, text. Now we have a correct implementation. Okay. These are the explicit calls. However, if you, uh, in this case, for example, I don't have any other uh, uh, members, so I can just skip text box copy constructs. Okay, now let us go back to our inheritance example. Uh, here, text is derived from shape, circle is derived from shape, which has an initial radius, and this is the point shape is circle construct is calling inner shape, initializing inner shape. I have an empty shape, defined shape, text, and um, I believe there is no circle. Let's add a circle. As well. Now compiling this. I can show you the constructor calls inside. So similarly, we have a shape construction like that. Text construction having the inner shape plus text and inner shape plus text. Uh, uh, this is these are the inner shape and circle. Okay, in this way I can define these constructors, and they are going to draw off. Uh, circle here is going to call itself uh, so let us talk about that how uh, the hidden uh, objects behave. I have a shape out and shape draw. And in the text, I also have a draw function. And when I call draw, which one is going to be called? Uh, the, uh, and the now, which one is going to be called? The question is, of course, similar to previous answers, the closest one, the lexically more clo uh, the closest one is the text draw, so it is going to be called if you call draw on a text object. However, we have one chance here. So scope operator is in our help. So if I use shape out, it is going to call this inner shape. In this way, we can select which shape is 
uh, going to be referred. Same as here. So you can either have D draw or D shape draw. And this way you can have uh, the opportunity to call other one thanks to scope operator. Uh, so you don't lose access to them. They are still accessible, but special syntax. And as you can see, calling text box draw versus inner shape draw can be done separately. Uh, the uh, order of uh, constructor calls we mentioned the inner object then uh, the so this inner shape then text constructors inner shape then text and circle will behave in the same way inner shape is first constructed with five six then the constructor of the circle uh, the copy constructor semantics behave the same way, so uh, uh, it is not different than composition, so I don't have that in my example. If you like, so you can implement your own. But I would like to emphasize some other things that will be topic to our later chapter, but I will give you some spoilers for it. I would like you to change main this way i have 10 shape pointers i have a random number generation and based on a random number generated i define either a shape on a random location or i define a text at random location with aaa and i define a random uh, circle at random location position and set the pi to this new pointer so p is an array of pointers so my array of pointers contain either a shape or a text or a circle which is not known until runtime first thing is does this work c++ is quite conservative on data types and it is not going to allow you to have arbitrary assignments of pointers to their other data type uh, pointers. Uh, but it is flexible in the uh, inheritance case. So shape is a super class, so it is going to allow. Then I call draw of all those shapes, and I delete all of them and finish. So this is just a spoiler, as I said. So I have 10 objects, and those 10 objects are different. For example, if you can follow, it is uh, shape, shape, text, text, circle, circle, text, shape, text, shape, circle, and goes like that. Then I draw them in this code. And they are drawn as this. But if I draw a, sorry, text in the usual way, it will be drawn as follows. If it's a circle, it will be drawn in a different way. So text is drawn this way. Here only in the new case, I only have shape draws. So there is no circle draw, there is no uh, text draw is called here, only shape draws. If you like, you can, uh, as an exercise, do the same in Python or Java, if you are familiar with Java. You, or Python, you can do the same thing as uh, in uh, those languages and see their behavior. In C++, C++ it behaves this way. This draw is bound to shape. 
shape growth because PI reference of PI has a data type shape. Okay. So this is a spoiler for the next slide set and chapters. So going back to our slides, how member hiding works. We already did an example of uh, these. Uh, so we have uh, either Uh, so if you use X, this one is going to be bound. AX is going to be bound our inner X here. And similarly, the get function as usual here is going to call this one. But if you say B object A get, it is going to get our inner get here. Okay. Uh, in this way, you can uh, resolve the ambiguity on your own. So the uh, next topic is multiple inheritance. Is it possible to derive a class out of uh, two super classes? Uh, for example, this is my one of the favorite examples, a land vehicle and water vehicle. If you combine them, there will be hovercraft. Or uh, you can have, for example, uh, a student and an instructor. It's possible in, in older times it was further possible. I was one of the examples in the early 2000s. I was a PhD student and a lecturer at the same time. So I was teaching 230 course. At the same time, uh, I was enrolled in some of the uh, courses. So the behavior of an instructor and the behavior of a student, I was, uh, I had to uh, show both of them. And the uh, registration period, I registered some of the courses and I uh, was assigned some courses to teach. Okay. So this might be the case. Or you can do this. You can have a class hierarchy for vehicle types, boat, plane, car, train, uh, and a class hierarchy for engines. Uh, uh, wind powered engine, a solar powered engine, electrical engine, uh, diesel engine, uh, steam engine, and you can generate new objects by taking one behavior from one side, another behavior from the other side. This is not a productive way of doing that, but it is possible. Sometimes we may need them. And sometimes we can have uh, this case having multiple behaviors from different paths. So that means you will have uh, like uh, two classes. And you are going to create a class from so this is my ugly UML. Okay, so. Uh, these two classes will have their behavior merge in the new class. Uh, it is uh, not part of, uh, this is not essential part of object-oriented programming. Some of the uh, languages just uh, choose not to have them, like Java. Java doesn't allow multiple inheritances that it uses interfaces to define a similar behavior, not, not, but, but not exact behavior. However, Python chooses to have it. C++ chooses to have it. Uh, so multiple inheritance in, is avoided, especially in uh, object-oriented design of software. However, we can have, 
that's uh, sometimes necessary. Uh, this is an example I have going from the shig. Uh, I see that the attributes of the shape is too crowded, so I would like to uh, separate them from the uh, shape's uh, geometry. So shape geometry is defined somewhere, the offset of the shape. And shapes attributes, line style, field style, line width, are defined in another uh, class. So when I uh, define a specific uh, uh, shape, like a circle, circle gets is offset from shape with additional radius. Also, it uses sh shape attributes like line width, line style, field style, and so on. And this way, we can have some sort of productive cause. Uh, and this is an example of multi inheritance. Uh, I am not going to show you an actual implementation of that. Uh, I'm not sure if it is complete or not, but if it is complete, I can uh, post it to you. But I have a more important problem, which is called a diamond problem. The diamond comes from this shape at the right hand side, the multiple inheritance. And the same uh, example that I have given you, uh, I have given you, uh, I have a student is a person, an instructor is a person. If someone is a student and an instructor at the same time, that is a student instructor, so I can have this multiple inheritance. However, it will end up in some sort of, what is the name of the student instructor? Name is going to come from this branch or this branch. Or can I have two different names? As a student, my name is Onur. As an instructor, my name is Tolga. If this is possible, actually, it shouldn't be possible. It should only have one person inside of me. And is it anyway? It is anyway. So uh, the uh, multiple inheritance has this uh, repetition and redundancy problem. And redundancy comes with some uh, non determinism ambiguity, and we don't like that, especially in software. So we shouldn't have that. And how we can get rid of that. Uh, so when I uh, initialize a student instructor, I should have only one person created for me, and I should have only access to that. Uh, if you use uh, the scope operator, you can resolve that uh, ambiguity. How each one is going to be accessed can be accessed by the student name instructor but name, but you don't so, uh, solve this uh, redundancy problem. Two different personalities, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. So we can have that. We can't have that. Okay. We should have only one person. One TJ can be tomorrow. So, and so on. Uh, the solution, the C designer solution, is some uh, overused keyword, which is called virtual. Uh, virtual public person, virtual private uh, person, this derivation label follows that. Uh, by use of that, the uh, person uh, inheritance will become uh, virtual. We need an extra, uh, we add an extra redirection. Thanks to that, after these, now you can have this uh, student instructors can have a single person uh, constructor and it will have contain only one uh, element inside, one person inside. So I have an example for that. Let me show you. This, yes. So the same example, I have a person implemented this way with ID and so on. It can only, uh, it can set its name and ID and show it and so on. Uh, and we have a student, for time being, let us keep this virtual. And we have an artist. Uh, artist is a person, student uh, is a person. Uh, artist has, in addition, uh, the uh, art type, 
that uh, he or she is uh, doing as given. Also in the student, uh, we have courses and number of courses. That is a series implementation. You can add a new course and so on. Uh, and we have both, which is art student. In the art student case, uh, there is a public student and artist, no other members. And if you uh, have without virtual, if you compile this, you will get an error. The person is not direct or virtual based of both. So you cannot use it this way. So it says, no, you cannot do it, uh, use it this way. Okay. So we should, for example, call in that case the student name and artist name as the constructors. Okay. So this, uh, the artist has the constructor calls inner person and the student uh, calls the inner person as well. Now in this way, I still have some examples. So it says that this set number calls have some ambiguous so the both object B has set name. You should clarify also. I would like to set my student name. So it is complaining about, about this. I believe. So you will get uh, warnings if you don't use this count keywords against any single tool. So there is one other. Here also, and here also. So this is not important, but just giving you hints to get rid of that warning. Uh, so now, uh, both A is owner, both B doesn't have a per, uh, person information. I show A, then show B. I add two courses and set name to Ahmed and show B again and go up, so it is as simple as this. Now, what happens if I call student in help? Okay. So unknown person constructed, and unknown person constructed. The constructor of student and uh, artist uh, are not reported separately, only student is reported. Uh, so when I have uh, this, a show. This is my uh, student person. No course is taken yet. And this is my artist person, and it is a musician. So it is given. You don't like that. Let us look at B. If I show B, uh, this is the person uh, of B as a student. This is a person of B as the artist, unknown artist. Then this becomes more in interesting. In this part, you will get this. Uh, the student name is Ahmed. Courses are 240 to 272. Uh, and artist name is not known and unknown art. So there is somebody who has student name Ahmed. Artist name is not known. So this is the redundancy I would like to talk about. So, uh, and uh, let me also add one more thing. Let us see out here, size of B. And size of students. So 
size of our test. and size of person, okay? Size of uh, bot, size of student artist person. So let us add this and show it, uh, run again. So you will get uh, 96, 68, 28, and 24. Uh, actually, in this, so 96 is some of those, and both contains a 24 inside. So actually, that means 24 is replicated. It occurs twice in a both typed object. Now let us add our virtual into the game. The position of virtual is this one. So because you like to get rid of redundancy of person, so that's why you put virtuals here, both of them. Now, compiling this and running this, you will see that setting the student name changed my the artist name as well. And now the size is not sum of both anymore. Sum of both, uh, sum of 80 and 40 uh, is now 120 and I have only 96. But uh, interestingly, I have some 12 bytes, I believe, of overhead. Uh, with 12 bytes of overhead at each student and uh, artist, now I have, I got rid of this um, redundancy. So we can also get rid of this now. So that it is going to work without any trouble. Uh, so I don't have to uh, choose the student or uh, artist uh, object anymore. I can directly call V show or person show from this object. Oh, sorry. Okay, so it is going to show the person inside directly. Uh, and you can have your artist show, student show, or both show. They are going to show inner person uh, correctly without any problems or this should be person. However, uh, you should be uh, care careful in one thing. If you uh, notice, uh, we have constructed a node person. Why? Because our uh, constructor call in the public case, this member initialization list, is initializing students and artists uh, with the given name, with owner in this case. So in the older examples, owner was correct. I'm oh, sorry, this. Uh, this one, okay. Uh, it doesn't have any person because uh, individually uh, the student and artist initialization doesn't have this person information anymore. So 
So now we have to. Now, making this person construction explicit, I can initialize my inner person. So this is the part you need to be careful about. Once you have this uh, diamond uh, problem solved in this way, now we have this uh, extra thing we have to uh, consider. And how uh, this is possible, actually, it is uh, making an inner, inner uh, pointer. It is adding an ex extra pointer. That's why we have this overhead from uh, 68. It became uh, 80. Uh, from 28, it became 40. Because of this reason, we have an extra pointer, extra table for person, inner person. Uh, so uh, what C++ does is we're going to create a single person. Uh, student person will point to this one. Uh, artist uh, person will point to this one. And in both, if I need to access person, all of the bindings are uh, getting this extra uh, pointer uh, traverse. At the end, we will get that uh, person information. Uh, in this way, from an artist, from a a student from a person, you can access exactly the same object thanks to a single uh, pointer which contains all uh, virtual uh, derivations. So it is like a table. You can have tens of them, but uh, the table will uh, follow that and uh, resolve the actual uh, object you are referring to. Uh, so now, uh, we are going to use virtual keyword for another purpose in the next slide group. A multiple inheritance is not essential, as we said. Uh, there are different ways, for example, instead of having a vehicle and engine hierarchies and combine them, we can have uh, an engine pointer members in vehicle so that we follow the pointer instead of directly uh, calling the sweeper class in the same scope, we can have an extra pointer, like strategy and bridge patterns, we can do that. We can use nested classes and so on. Uh, so uh, especially in object-oriented uh, design, uh, inheritance uh, has the high, uh, biggest advantage if we, we have polymorphism out of it. So in the next slide group, we are going to focus on polymorphism, how to access polymorphism uh, through inheritance. Uh, thank you very much for uh, watching. Uh, see you later. Uh, any questions are welcome on uh, department forum. Thank you again.